one. I have spoken many times about how I save up for luxury items and I want to revisit this topic because it's so relevant. Social media, how many times have you been on social media? On, on YouTube or on Instagram, you see the perfect bag that you want or a pair of shoes and you're thinking, how is it that this person, they're like affording a bag a month or they've got this amazing lifestyle. Meanwhile, I'm working nine till eight at night. I don't have any sort of a life and I don't actually have the money to put towards luxury items, let alone any sort of life or entertainment. And I wanna talk about that because it's all very well coming on here and saying, well, this is what I do. And I am gonna to talk to you about that, but if you are not on a high enough income in the first place, frankly, it's like pointless to you to know it. So what I've done is I have put together on my blog and you can download it off there, print it out and have it for yourself. I've put together the spreadsheet and the formula that I personally use. So what I do is I take the amount that I'm paid each month, I deduct off it all of my bills and then whatever I've got left at the end of it, which because my bills don't change each month, it's always the same amount. So I only really have to do that spreadsheet the once. But whatever I've got left at the end is mine to play with. And I normally put the majority of it aside to save. And then the bit that's left, that's what I use in the month for entertainment, unforeseen stuff. That works really well for me. And I use that in combination with a vision board that I've got because a second thing you have to do, if there's something you are saving up for, let's say you're saving up for the Chanel Classic Flap, the thing you've got to stop yourself doing is getting led astray. With the vision board, I have a picture of the item that it is that I'm saving up for, and that vision board is on the wall in front of my desk. The reason why it's so important to do that is when you're saving for something like this, let's say it's going to take you a year or two years to get the money together for it. Two years when you're saving is a very long time and you might get to six months in and your eye gets caught on a Chanel card holder or a Chanel pair of shoes and you think my god I feel like I've been saving for like the longest time and I haven't got myself anything and I'm so far off the bag I'm gonna get the card holder. No, don't do that. But what happens if you get paid each month and you use that spreadsheet let's say and you're in a situation that I was in a couple of years ago now where you got paid once you minus off all your bills you were in minus numbers and it made my debt really bad because I was trying to pay off debt but I wasn't earning enough to cover off the minimum payments on all of the debt that I had so how did I get to a situation where I can actually afford this stuff well it took years I'm not gonna tell you that I hit 23 and was like buying Chanel I wasn't it took until a lot later on into my career. It's all down to how much you get paid. The more you get paid and the less your outgoings, the more you're gonna have left. Before you start saving for your bag, let's say you've just got yourself a promotion or you're at a new job and you're at a position where, let's say you've got debt, you're earning enough money now to be able to save something. If you have debt, don't take the money that you've got available and save it, pay off the debt because the interest you're gonna get on any savings is considerably less than the interest you're gonna be getting charged on debt. And you're gonna to have to pay the debt off anyway. The debt, chances are, the debt's gonna be taking quite a large piece of the pie from all your earnings each month. So focus on clearing that debt. That is the main thing. And as soon as you've cleared your debt, you will feel incredible, I promise you. If you're looking to get paid more, work towards a promotion. And I'm gonna link below to a dedicated video I've done on asking for a promotion. It's not something that you wanna walk into and be like, hey boss, can I have some more money? You wanna make sure you go in prepared. You want to go in there with a case study as to why you're deserving of it. And also, when you go into that meeting, you need to honestly ask yourself, do I deserve it? Am I going over and above with my job? Am I always in on time? Because what you don't want to do is go into that meeting for them to say things that you already knew deep down. Only go and ask for promotion when deep down in your heart you know you're worthy of it. And if you don't get a promotion and if you truly feel like you're deserving, look for another job. That's what I used to do every time. If I, was, if I wanted a promotion and I didn't get it, I'd go and look for another job. Another thing you can do, I used to do this all the time. And sometimes, you know, even as long ago as like a couple of months, I still do this now. It's like an ingrained thing. If you're looking to make money quickly, i.e. within a week, eBay. 
eBay was something that when I was in lots of debt, I was on top of my game on eBay. You know those paper boutique bags that you get from Chanel? People buy those. They'll give you 15 pounds for them. Old tops that you've got from H&M. If you get yourself a really banging photo of you wearing it, someone will pay you for it. I've got a box next door, a huge box next door of things that I've gone through and I've given stuff to charity and what's left over, I'm gonna sell. And that money that I make from sales, that goes towards my holidays. It goes towards some of my luxury purchases. And although it's a boring, monotonous thing to take all those photos and to create the listings, once you've done it, that's a way that you can make money within a week or sometimes quicker if you do a shorter uh, listing for items. And the final point is to work smart and not hard. I have many of you on here who say, I don't get it, you know, I'm working nine until 8 p.m. I can't do any more hours and I'm just not I'm just not paid enough. There are many jobs that I can think of in my mind where you will absolutely be worked into the ground, but it's well known that the salary in that industry is not very good. And I'm not saying to you that you should pick an industry that you despise just because you know the money is good. Trust me, that's not good either because you're gonna hate every day. And work, what is it they say? Work makes up like 70% of your life. If you hate your job, your life is gonna suck. So you need to pick an industry that you enjoy, not just one that you look at and you're like, yeah, I better do that because there's money in it. That is not gonna make you happy. But equally, working long hours and not getting paid is also not gonna make you happy and it's not gonna fulfill you. No one wants to get to the end of the week and you've worked all of these hours and you don't have the money to buy yourself a, you know, a takeaway at the end of the week or go out to the cinema. I've been there. It's so demoralizing when you work all of these hours and there is nothing left for yourself at the end of it consistently for years. Take a moment to really look at what it is that you do for a living where you ideally want to be, not just financially, but actually just in terms of your job. Let's say, for example, I was talking to one of you the other day about this. I spent quite a bit of time as a cleaner uh, several years back. You're working long hours, the money isn't great. One thing that is really difficult to find are honest, hardworking cleaners that will come and do domestic work. Even though it feels like a luxury, I'm always working and I really need someone to clean the house for me. This, is, this again comes back to that point of working smart and not hard. I could clean the house, but I will make more money working on my computer than I will cleaning the house. I could do with a cleaner. Have I got one? No, because I'm a control freak. What can I say? But one thing that I really wanted to do that would have boosted my earnings as a cleaner was to set up my own business. Um, my concept around this was to go into domestic cleaning. You get out of cleaning for a company where you're paid minimum wage start doing it domestic, start taking on other people. You become the manager, you're going around checking their work, you're also cleaning at the same time. You get a cut of each person's salary. Continue to build that up. I mean, the amount of people that will want to get involved because they can do part-time work, it's good money on the side. Meanwhile, you're earning money from doing the cleaning, but you're also earning a percentage of everyone that you're fundamentally employing in the company. So there's always a way of thinking smart about what it is that you're doing to maximize what it is that you're earning. So to take us all the way back around to the beginning, this is how I save for luxury. It's not sadly as simple as take what you have free each month because a lot of people don't have anything free each month and a lot of people might have a little bit free each month and it will take them 10 years to save up for something. So this is a realistic look at how you can save up for luxury items. Also, if you are underage and you're not able to get work, a great thing you can do is the eBay thing. I think you do have to be a certain age to have an eBay account, so maybe ask a parent or something to do it for you. But if you've got bits of clothing, if you're like great at taking your pictures, like doing the fashion shots in the mirror, start selling things. It's a really good way of earning money and then you've got it in a PayPal account so you can like online shop and you've got that money there available for you. I'm gonna link to that blog post below if you wanna take a look at that spreadsheet. And remember, stay focused. Even if it takes you forever to save up, if you know you want it, print out a picture of the item, have it in your room somewhere, have it on your desk so that you are constantly remembering why it is that you're doing this. Why am I working hard? What is it that I want? Maybe it's a holiday, maybe it's not a bag, whatever it is that you want, stay focused on it. Could even be a deposit for a house. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.